if you look into his way of thinking, it's very different. You see, love is uh, love is a central theme, and he combines love with compassion. into that. My name is Muhammad Shafiq, professor of uh, Islamic and religious studies here at Nazareth College of Rochester, Rochester, New York, USA. And I'm also executive director of the Hickey Center for Interfaith Studies and Dialogue. I also am a head of a chair, which is called the Triple IT Chair, meaning International Institute of Islamic Thought Interfaith Chair, which has been created here at Nazareth College. I'm head of that also. I did my PhD and the, the topic was on state Islamicity in the 20th century. At that time, I was, um, all is Islamic movement, are, I was looking into their history, the work they are doing. So I was looking into almost all Islamic, contemporary Islamic movements. And at that time I studied uh, at the Golan movement also, Fatullah Golan movement, uh, which is called Hizmat movement. I studied at that time, and especially his thoughts about a compassionate nature of human being and how this compassionate nature of human being can help the world to heal. So I started to study him also, and his methodology and how his methodology is similar and different from other Islamic movements uh, in the world. So at that time, and then uh, throughout many years, I have been able, when I travel around, to come across uh, people of Hizmet movement um, in almost in every country, wonderful work which they are doing. Fatullah Golan movement is a little different movement from the rest of the Islamic movement. So its strength and its uh, a spirituality comes out of the Sufi movement of Islam. And the Sufi movement of Islam has different streams, Naqshbandiya, Qadriya, and others. So you can see his way of looking into the Sufi movement. But you know, the gist of Sufi movement is strengthen your spirituality. When human spirituality is strengthened through education, not just blindly through zikr alone. You know, we do give people how to do chanting and do zikr. But zikr is not alone because zikr without education could be blind. So education is first. So educate people and then through education bring them towards spirituality and awaken their spirituality. Once people, person is educated and spiritually awakened, becomes compassionate to human being. And that's the methodology which he used. He did not use only a methodology like creating halakas, like creating the Sufi circles where zikr is done. He created educational institutions where through education uh, this uh, enlightenment can come into human heart. You know that when enlightenment comes to human heart, the human heart becomes peaceful. And once individual is peaceful, how the light spreads out to the rest of the world. So uh, if you look into his way of thinking, it's very different. You see, love is uh, love is a central theme. And he combines love with compassion. If you look at Nursi, Nursi emphasis on, uh, on compassion. He goes further than that. He said, love should be fast. When there is love of 
others in your heart was first you should love yourself and loving yourself then you love the rest because how we are together as one humanity and then how compassion will, compassion will flow from there and that's what you know he how he brings uh, here and i think his way of thinking is very influential especially to christianity to christians because christians believing on agape love concept here and many christians believe perhaps there is no love in in the quran or there is no love in islam you know many christians have come to me is there a word for love and then i said what do this there but they don't see that because from the pulpits imams our khojas or imams usually talk about you know hellfire more than love of god that god is wudud ghafur ar rahim ar rahman ar rahim so they don't talk much about that but they talk about the punishment so here he talks about love and compassion and that's a beautiful way of how uh, fathullah gulan has brought to this world and especially asking muslims that we need to change our methodology in the 21st century to bring humanity together to unite them and to heal them there is a lot of problems in the world and what we can do about that khidmat movement means a lot you see three things are there education spirituality and service to humanity together and also you don't you see that that hizmat movement all three are in one not separate institutions so anywhere hizmat movement is there you will see education you will see charity you will see spirituality emphasis on all three of them together because if education does not lead humanity or those who are graduated from educational institution to the service of humanity how the world could be healed how we can see the pain of others so this young generation which is going through our education must go to the streets and how to serve see the suffering of the people and then see how to help them i think this is a very important movement it looks to me that you know he you know he saw the future where the future has to be and he, the hizmat movement uh the way it uh is built upon it and the way it is uh, its goal and objectives are is how to combine all three and that will eventually be beneficial to the world so meaning the islam teaching is uh, in the hizmat movement is how the three i mean these three things are essential for healing of individual as well as the community at large tawhidi paradigm where is that oneness of god is there it also teaches oneness of humanity so the tawhidi paradigm cannot be separated that you just worship one god but you do not look after human welfare so hizmat movement you can see that translating the tawhidi paradigm into the oneness of humanity and the beauty of that is certainly muslims are to be served but the the hizmat movement goes along not only serving the muslim community but serving the rest and also the hizmat movement does not does not distinguish between a believer and a non believer a muslim christian jew or an atheist or anybody else does not distinguish in the service of humanity because actually tawhidi paradigm means god is one and in all creation including environment all creation means what god has created that means whatever is there between on the earth and between earth and the heavens whatever is there as the creation of god and it is the responsibility of human being and the tawhidi paradigm to safeguard that to protect that so again hizmat movement goal is not only to serve the needy the poor it's also environment it's also all creatures everything so how to you know god created us and gave this universe as amana as a trust how we can carry that trust and that trust means to fulfill the trust you take care of everything what is there between heaven and the earth this is very much islam you see that islam does not mean just to say la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah 
that there is no God but one God and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God. That is not just to say lip service. It's practical. You look, the prophet, peace be upon him, first took a step to do things. Then he would talk about it. The problem with the Muslim world is we talk a lot. We do not do things how the prophet told us to do things and practice. And that's what we are, we are lacking today. You see, there are billions of Muslims, but there is no humanitarian war taking place. There is no environmental war taking place. The other, we are lacking this. So actually, the Hizmat movement is bringing this to the minds of the Muslims also. Look, our job is not just to sit at the mosque and pray. Our job is to pray and go forward and help the, you know, help the creation of God. He has provided a unique understanding of how Muslims can be involved in the world, in a pluralistic world, in a complex world, stressing interfaith dialogue in a particular way that it has not been stressed before. So I think the Gulan movement in the real sense is following the prophetic methodology of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to spread the light of Islam to the rest of the world.